Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. I really do appreciate it. And I'm thankful for all the people that come to my channel from all over the world and write the nicest comments. Thank you very much. The first item I have in today's news, I'm just going to give you the link. I'm not going to read it. It's titled, Alvin Bragg's case against President Trump is a total scam with no basis in law, fact, or reality. I thought I would offer this up to you because I think it's good to be informed about what's going on. And that one seemed like one that you might want to know about. The second one article that I have is called The Dirty Little Secret About Homelessness is the Key to Ending It. This is an interesting article because it presents a lot of facts, some of which I was not familiar with, <clears throat> that go completely against what homeless advocates are saying. The answer that many homeless advocates give is that it's because we don't have enough homes and poverty has increased. But neither is true. Poverty has steadily declined since the 1980s when homelessness first became an issue of public concern. And you can see these graphs. Uh, when you get the article and you pull it up, you'll be able to watch, look at them a lot closer. But I mean, it's obvious uh, poverty has decreased in every demographic over the past years. The evidence is overwhelming that the majority of people on the street are there because of untreated mental illness or addiction, which leads people to use all their money to support their drug habits and be high rather than work. So that's the reason why they're homeless. It talks about how cities are addressing the problem and how the ways that city address the problem makes a big difference. You can see this graph, the two biggest ones on the left, are San Francisco and New York City. The blue is sheltered and the green is unsheltered. If you notice, New York City shelters almost all of their homeless, whereas San Francisco shelters less than half of theirs. The result is when homeless people are not allowed to shelter, they're not provided with shelter, they die at three times the the rate that they die in places where they are sheltered. So it seems like shelter for homeless people, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know why I'm doing this. Uh, shelter for homeless people is important. Uh, talks about illicit drugs and how shoplifting arrests go down in various places because of what we know is the defund the police type thing and homeless population grew 31% in California and declined 18% in the rest of the U.S. And finally, but there is an ideology behind this too. It's the idea that people suffering from addiction and mental illness are victims of society or the system which is fundamentally evil. And according to that logic, to restore justice in the world, we must give victims whatever they want, including the right to camp anywhere and use hard drugs, even if it results in their death. The alternative to this dystopia is tough love. We need to give people the care they need, but there's not, an, there's not, but that's not through enabling addiction, excuse me, and illegal behavior, but rather enforcing laws and mandating care as an alternative to jail when they are broken. It's not enough to do what many Republicans want to do, which is to enforce laws and recriminalize shoplifting and hard drugs simply. We need to do that for sure. But states must also have caseworkers, group homes, and psychiatric hospitals so there is an alternative to jail, and so states can provide people with the specialized care where it's available which simply isn't going to be in many of the small towns, like the one at the center of the Supreme Court hearing. The dirty little secret about homelessness, which is also the key to ending it, is that we must both mandate psychiatric and addiction care as an alternative to jail, 
and create a proper statewide psychiatric and addiction care system. If you're at all familiar with this problem, then you probably know that uh, decades ago, the decision was made to eliminate psychiatric institutions. They were thought to be abusive. And so we got rid of them. Well, you know, you, you, you can't get rid of people that have mental health problems. So what happens when they don't have a psychiatric hospital to go to? They go on the street <clears throat> and they create problems for themselves and for other people. So homelessness is a tough issue to resolve, but the, the present approaches are not working, obviously, and so we need to try something new. Uh, this next one is entitled 10 Reasons Not to Buy an Electric Car. <clears throat> I highlighted a couple things here that really shocked me. I was not aware of this. Um, electric cars apparently weigh two to 3,000 pounds more than a gasoline-powered car. And so the tires wear out quicker because they are, these are heavier. They're low-rolling resistant and run-flat tires. They're not $100 a tire, they're $400 a tire, and they wear out about every 10,000 miles. Of course, no one talks about that, but it's important that you look at all the true cost of owning a vehicle. Golly days, every 10,000 miles, that's horrible. Imagine how much more rubber you're putting into the landfills. It's ridiculous. Another problem with electric cars, they depreciate really fast. Look at the really cool Porsche Taycan. I think it's spectacular. Unfortunately, it's a $200,000 car that's available used for $100,000. So if you buy one of these vehicles, you're losing about half as soon as you drive it off the lot. Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of cars that have been depreciated that fast. So I don't know if that's as much of an issue as it is that it's $200,000. Who can afford that? And then one other thing. The battery replacement will make you cry. Some of them are as much as $60,000 for a new battery. Lease it. Give it back to the dealer. That's your smartest move. I've heard stories in the past about uh, the cost of replacement batteries but $60,000 for batteries, my God, that's insane. Wow, that's really, that'll keep me from buying an electric car, I guarantee you. I cannot afford that. And finally, I have this, the Green Deal faces a reckoning in Europe. Uh, I'd like some of my European viewers to tell me if any of this is true or not, but what they're reporting here is that with the European Union elections just over a month away, liberals in the European Parliament, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> <coughs> I have some kind of a breathing problem. I don't know what's going on. Um, are facing a major backlash over their Green Deal platform that would hand conservatives, led by farmers and agricultural workers, major gains. According to The Guardian, Belgian M MEP Philippe Lamberts, co-leader of the Greens, is now warning that the Green Deal is at, quote, very high, unquote, risk of being killed off as liberals face poor poll numbers in the lead-up to Election Day. The likelihood of the right killing the Green Deal is very high, he said. I mean, they make no mystery that after winning the ideological battle on asylum and migration, their next target is the European Green Deal and what they call the woke economy. So I'd be interested in hearing from those of you who are watching me from Europe. Do you think any of this is true? What do you think the elections are going to do? I know you can't predict the future, but you know I'm just asking for your feeling. Do you think that the that the uh, conservatives are going to win victories all over Europe, or is this just a lot of hype? So that's today's news. As always, I pray that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you will be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. 
I pray that he'll do that same thing for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.